Hi everyone and thanks for tuning in to my Observed Reveal Part 6. It actually looks like it's about to rain soon so I'll make this short because I want to get the roof over. So in this video I should be fitting the rubber seals to the walls. Uh, I've fitted a light in the observatory now and I've got the insulation down on the floor and so I've also getting the cable up to the rear of power supply and I shall be getting an internet cable into the observatory from the house and I've managed to get the magnets connected to the roof so that it controls the stop positions now which is a bit of a godsend <laughs> very often I've not stopped it in the proper place and the roof has gone too far um, there is a tree also unfortunately which has had to come down that was slightly in the way but it was also causing problems with the roots to the pathway um, coming into the property so that's unfortunately had to go so there's a few things to do and it's going to rain soon so I'm going to get the roof shut any second. Today I've got a friend of mine popping around to have a look at the observatory layer so when he gets here I'll introduce you to him. I'm sure many of you know him already. So recently I've been having some issues with this cigarette lighter adapter. When you put the plug into the socket and accidentally walk past and knock the wire before you know it the whole thing is shut down because it's lost connection that's happened to me more than once so I'm afraid drastic measures are going to have to be taken here that's what I think of this there that's done so what I plan to do now is to attach some screw-on connectors to these wires and they'll be screwed on to these connections here and hopefully they won't give me any more problems with disconnection of power. Right, that's nice and tight as well. That's not going anywhere. So now I'm going to attach that to there and screw that on. They're not going anywhere. That's a much better connection. And this is also a DC 13.8 volt output, the same as the cigarette lighter output here is also DC 13.8, so it's going to be the same power supply going up to the rig. So just checking that it all works. So that works fine. Okay, so I need to fix this little problem and have to cut the corner of that brick pier off at the top there so it misses the felt overhang on the roof. That's cleared it nicely. Yeah, I wish I'd noticed that before because I've got a little bit of damage to the felt there now. But hopefully, well, it won't get any worse. But there, it's a problem solved. Okay, so I've managed to trim that up a bit. So today I'm fitting the rubber seals in the observatory. I've got to attach this to the wall and that's going to go up and make contact with the underside of the roof. So the roof will slide along over the top of the rubber seal, but hopefully keep it sealed on both sides. I've got to do it on this side as well. So we'll get these seals in and uh, then I'm going to seal the ends. So as you can see, I've fitted the side rubbers. And when I first put them on, I did wonder what all the noise was. It turned out the rubber here was vibrating against the underside of the roof made a horrendous noise. So I've now got some 
rubber grease and I'm going to put that all over this rubber seal and it'll actually protect the rubber and stop it from going hard and brittle. It also stops it from squeaking. So today I'm going to attempt to get the magnetic switch working. So I've got to set the magnetic switch into the top of the wall and fit the magnets onto the uh, roof which will move and slide over the top of the switch and hopefully control it and stop it in both directions. So what I've got to do here is set this magnetic switch into the top of the wall. I'm going to recess it into the timber and then when the magnet slides past which will be fixed to this rail it'll come along like that make connection with the magnetic switch and switch it off and then the other magnet will be attached to the underside of the roof so when it comes back the other way it'll slide over the top and switch it off that way that's the plan anyway so I'm now going to recess this and uh, get it fitted into place I'm going to place a piece of clear perspex over the top of the switch and silicon that down to protect it from the weather. So and this is my piece of perspex and that will fit nicely over there. I'm going to silicon that in place. Uh, that's flush with the top here and that is now going to protect the actual switch itself from moisture and potentially shorten out if it gets wet. So that's now in place, and then just gonna sort these wires out. And I just had another brush seal delivered. This will go in the observatory on the end where the wheels will pass through. <laughs> <laughs> Look who's here. I can't film you filming me. No, you no. can't. Nice to see you, Simon. Nice to see you again, Glenn. You're uh, filming me, but I'm not filming you. Nah, I know. It, change, <laughs> it does. It? Come and have a look at the object, mate. Absolutely. Can't wait. Right, well, here it is. Oh, she's a beauty, isn't she? So, I'll just uh, press the magic button. Here we go. <laughs> oh, that's a nice swing. And it will I'm stop. wondering whether it was my roof was because it was so light, it used to go quite oh. quick. I'm oh, wondering yeah. if the weight makes it go a bit slower, but it's a nice smooth opening, that. Yeah. Look at that. The measurement of this? Uh, this is seven by eight. Right, so mine's going to be eight by 11. Uh, <laughs> got to go one bigger, ain't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's going to have two piers. Yeah, yeah. It's going to have two piers. I know. Piers. I am, 250. I'm, that's um, 275. Right, I, so I haven't got room for two peers though, Glenn. No. Well, you have, if you could just fit a little one. Well, there'll have to be a little one. There's no room left. You've got loads of room around <laughs> there. I didn't have room for So Glenn's come to visit me, and he's ended up doing open heart surgery on my PC. <laughs> I'm sure I've never done this before. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he knows what he's doing. Yeah, we just... It's, uh, all, it's all bluff. <laughs> yeah. Well, as long as it works again, that's all that matters. <laughs> well, it looks very scary to me. It's been nicely put together. I just don't like that um, location of the power supply and how, mm. they, how they've done it. So this is the moment of truth. <laughs> we are now going to put it back on the desk. Apparently, Power if it up. don't work, Simon's getting my CT10. Is that right? Uh, yeah. Okay. That's what the deal is. So... We'll see. <laughs> it's just a quick test to see if it's all going to come to life. Got to remember where in first. So we're just doing a little minor operation. There was a hard drive positioned here in front of the fan, which is the fan for the power supply. We've now repositioned the hard drive inside the casing and hopefully it's going to give more air to the power supply and hopefully it's going to solve the problem that I've been having where we think possible overheating issue causing the PC to crash but it's just a test really to see if it makes any difference well look it came back on because <laughs> it's nice and quiet as well Do you want to lock yourself in right well it 
appears to be working. Well, we, let's see if you've got three drives first. Oh yeah. <laughs> Should be four, because there's an oh, external. Sorry, let's see if you've got four drives. I saw four then. Did you see four? I did, very quickly. <laughs> it, did, it did come on very quickly, didn't it? There we go, there you go. Got four drives. There you go. So you've got four drives, and also you've got your Google Drive mapped to your PC as well. Right. Okay, so, um, yeah. Oh. So I don't get this ET10 then? No, I'm sorry oh, mate, it's okay. all working. Okay. <laughs> I'll let you come around and play with the CT10. Yeah. There you go. A deal is a deal. <clears throat> right, today I'm going to be laying the floor, which means drilling some battens to the concrete floor. So there's going to be a lot of dust flying around. So I'm going to have to take the rig off and take it indoors today while I do the work. And it will keep it protected, keep the dust off it. So the plan for this floor is to screw these two or two battens onto the ground, onto the concrete, and then lay this 40 mil silicate in between. It's gonna go over the whole floor area. And then I've got some 18 mil plywood to go on top of that. That will create the floor, and eventually there'll be some kind of rubber matting or some kind of floor on, on the top of the board. carefully mark this out for the pier and with the aid of a piece of string and a sharp nail I've marked the, um, the curve to cut out and then I've gone over it with a pencil so that would be interesting to see if that is where the pier actually is I've given it a little bit of space extra all the way around and then I've got to do the same on the other half of the board and hopefully it will fit bad fit just got to do the other half now so the second bit's in just got to screw it down there not running too bad at all so that's another job ticked off the list floors all done so here's my new light in the observatory as you can see it's got multi positions on here I can turn it right out like that point it up or I can have it facing backwards if I don't want so much light in. It's fully waterproof. Very nice light. So I've got to show you this. So what it's used for is for threading cables through conduits and small spaces and that. So it's got this flexible end. It's like on a spring. And when you push it through a pipe, it goes around bends. So I'm going to push it through here and it goes through really easily and there's a bend at the bottom of that pier so it's going to get through that bend and then come out the top of the pier which you'll see in a minute it come out the top of the pier there it is then you just pull that through. That is so good. And we use that for pulling cables through small spaces and conduits, etc. Well, that's the result. I've pulled it through. Just got to get it all the way out now. But at least it's through the point. It's come quite a way. It's come all right there. Across the garden there. Under the path the back of the observatory. So that's great. Both internet cables and out into the observatory. It's a bit of a job pulling it through that conduit but it's done. There they're both in. Now all I've got to do is backfill.
I'm glad to see it's only a small base you're putting in. Just, just <laughs> all observatory, I'm having six scopes. Six scopes. Lovely. Eight scopes, two, two pairs. That'd be a nice one, eh? <laughs> so as we had a clear sky tonight, I took advantage of that and I decided to have a go at the Spider and Fly Nebula. I've taken the reducer off the scope, so it's native focal length of 840 mil. Uh, it fits the Spider and Fly Nebula quite nicely in the frame. So hopefully I'll get an image to show you later. Imaging session has just finished. It's actually clouded over now, so it's just as well. I'm just going to send the scope back to the home position and then I'll get the roof back over. hope you found this video useful and if you've got any questions regarding the build of this video any part of the build that is so just put the questions in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them so I'd like to thank all of my subscribers if you haven't subscribed yet and you like this kind of thing um, and you'd like to follow me on my Yasuo adventures please hit that subscribe button hit the like button and tick the little bell and you won't miss any future videos I really hope you like the image at the end and of course I wish you all clear skies.